Station 6 to 10, Clinical Examination. The Royal College states that the aim of these stations is to assess clinical examination and interpretation of clinical signs. These cases are modelled on the short cases in the traditional clinical examination. There's only one patient at each station and there's going to be a separate examiner for each station. Station 6 is cardiovascular. Station 7 is respiratory and other. Station 8, abdominal and other. Station 9, musculoskeletal and other. And Station 10, neurological and neurodisability. So it's important during these stations to have a systematic and uncluttered approach. Go through things in order. You need to have practiced the order beforehand so you'll know exactly what you're doing and appear confident to the examiner. Although having a systematic approach is important, we mustn't forget that paediatrics is sometimes an opportunistic sport. If you're in a cardiovascular uh, scenario, for, exa for example, and you've been asked to examine a murmur and the child looks a little fractious or has obviously been crying, then you may want to take the opportunity to get your stethoscope out and listen then because that might be the only time you have to listen to the murmur with the child not crying. It's also important that everything you do is age appropriate. Get down to the right level of the child, talk to the child appropriately and ensure that your diagnoses are age appropriate. Station 6 is the cardiovascular station. This can sometimes be tricky. It's often difficult because of the wide variety of conditions that are available. It can be tricky because you may have a very uncooperative child. But the examiner is going to be aware of that and will make allowances for it. As well as the standard cardiovascular examination, you may want to ask the examiner at the end whether they would like you to check the blood pressure or, under certain circumstances, assess the JVP. You may want to take some care with your running commentary. Often, when you're listening to a murmur, you don't want to have to say what first springs into your mind as that may prejudice your final diagnosis. So just keep your counsel during this station. Wait, assess the murmur carefully and quietly before saying anything too definitive. Station 7 is the respiratory and other station. Again, you'll need to undertake a full respiratory examination but you may need to consider in certain circumstances whether it would be appropriate to undertake an ENT exam, for example. If there's a sputum pot available, look at it. Describe the sputum. And, again, under certain circumstances, you may ask the examiner whether they would like you to undertake a peak flow or even spirometry. And it has been known that at this station... If time allows, the examiners have asked candidates to even demonstrate how to undertake a peak flow or some interpretation of spirometry. Section 8 is the abdominal and other station. A standard examination is important, but you must include the child's nutritional status. Just that does the child look well nourished? Are they thin? You'd obviously want to plot the various growth parameters on appropriate charts. And the other thing for this station, and also to a lesser extent with the cardiovascular and respiratory stations, is be familiar with scars. Know what a laparotomy scar looks like. Know what, under the respiratory examination, a lobectomy scar looks like. Obviously know the reasons for a thoracotomy scar or a median stenotomy scar in the cardiovascular system. Station 9 musculoskeletal or other. It's unlikely at this station that you're going to find children who've got developmental neurological abnormalities. This is much more for children who have arthritis, such as juvenile uh, idiopathic arthritis. In this station, it's highly likely that you're going to need to demonstrate a PGALS examination. And it's important that you've practised examination of joints Practice repeatedly examination of knees, ankles, hips. Be familiar with all of those so you're going to look confident. And also have a scheme devised for examination of a limb. How do you examine a leg or an arm? And have an examination scheme marked out already for how to examine a hand. 
not specifically for the joint, but in a general sense. In this section, occasionally, you're going to get haematological abnormalities, dermatological abnormalities, renal or endocrinological abnormalities also. And finally, section 10, the neurological or neurodisability section. Again, another worrisome station for many candidates. You have a vast array of conditions and often challenging patients to examine. As well as being clear about a general neurological examination, take time to concentrate on one of the more difficult aspects of that examination, namely the cranial nerves. Again, practice will make perfect here. Have an age-appropriate exam. Clearly, examining the cranial nerves in a child of six months is going to be very different from examining the cranial nerves in a child of ten years. Think about examining the eyes. Practice eye examination. Think about different gates. Try and expose yourselves to children who've got lots of gait abnormalities. And also, don't forget cerebellar signs. There are many children who come to the exam with quite a large array of cerebellar signs and you'll be often asked to demonstrate them.